But before you go on, all I was going to say yeah. is that now, see, you've got me at the point where I'm going to actually, I want to get into action. Right. And I'm just giving you feedback on what it is that I'm hearing. You might already know this stuff, but I'm, I'm telling you, it's got to, that's got to slay. That's beautiful. Words. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? It For just sure. compliments. That's all I meant. Yeah. yeah it, it's, it's automated. So it's just, you just right. conveyor belt. Yeah. It's just right down the line. And I can say everything. Well, I just need the words. Yeah. I love every yeah. part of that. Yeah, I mean, I got a ton of videos, you know, so so that's, that's it. Uh, fortunately, I've documented a lot of these sessions. I documented a lot of the trainings I did for the other individuals. Did not, not too many people took advantage of it, but people who took advantage of it are really winning right now. Send it to me. Yeah, it's going to be on the, it's going to be on the channel. Kind of the strategy of some mm -hmm. is to wear them out, right? Where there's a few things that you could do to make to make more efficiency of your time and still accomplish the same objective and so um, like for example the objective is to wear them out so they don't go and speak to another person right ideally but we can one of the many reasons right one of the many reasons right so we can achieve the same effect by let's say we're talking to an aggregate lead so if we get an aggregate lead you know you say you know obviously you list out the source it looks like you did an online inquiry right got it uh, are we the first call or you know, where, where in line are we? Because you're probably going to get called by three or four companies. What you're going to find is that we're typically the first, right? And say, okay, well, here's the reason why. The reason why we're the first one is because every other company that's going to call you, ultimately, we all go to the same place. But because of fair lending practices, we want to ensure that you're aware of how to get the same access without broker points and high retail costs. So New American Funding, the reason why we're such so recognized across the nation and why homeowners within your county prefer working with us is because they're not paying Uber to get to us. They're already with us. So there's no need to actually really pay a middleman. So here's the upside, Sean, is, is the information I show you today is actual information. It's not an advertised rate. It's not best case scenario. I can only put in front of you what you qualify for. Whereas like there may be in the, you know, calls from the other lenders that are gonna call right when we hang up with each other and they're gonna represent uh, brokers, they're gonna represent high retail shops, but ultimately we all go to the same cow for the milk, and that's Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, VA, or FHA. The only advantage I can bring to you, Sean, is that my relationship with these entities are so strong where we have certain features, like minimal documentation, sometimes I don't need appraisal. I'll go into that information if necessary. But let me just ask a few basic questions because we work a little bit different rather than all these other companies that are going to want to spend hours with you on the phone is I want to make sure I can even move forward with the phone conversation. If I can, I'm going to show you exactly what I could do very, very quickly. But if I can't, I'm going to save you a ton of time and hopefully save you a ton of those follow up calls that are going to come right after. And maybe I'll point you in the right direction. So the property that we're going to talk about here on Myford, this is where you live, right? Got it. Perfect. Now, besides the mortgage, what? Total debts on credit do you, will appear. Like, let's start off with revolving debt, Sean. How much do you own revolving debt? 50 grand. Okay, and then every month on that 50 grand, how much do you send? Mm, total, all of them? Sure. About a thousand something. Okay. About a thousand. And is that the minimum payment or do you send above and beyond, Sean? No, that's the minimum payment. Got it. And then any other debt besides the revolving? Uh, car loan. Okay. Are you the sole income in the household, Sean? I am. Okay. What's your marital status? I uh, lived with a girl a long time, but not married. Got so. it. So you handled finances, right? I handled them on my own, sure. Okay, perfect. The reason why I ask is because I need to know what, what's called the, we have what's called a net net income, Sean. What a net net income means is you take your net income, not your gross, it's what you bring home. Now, after all your expenses, the 1200 that goes to credit cards, your mortgage payment, your groceries, insurance, your pet food, daycare, whatever you have for that given month, even your cable bill. How much of your net income are you netting to follow you into the next month? Not very much. Got it. What would you say it is? Got a few hundred. Okay. And do you put that straight in the bank? No. Where does it go? You know, uh, who Probably knows? Probably dining out on the weekends, right? Probably that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. So, and then just roughly on average, how much do you average in, in checking and savings? Oh, checkings probably... 1500 savings is probably around seven grand, eight grand. Okay. Seven grand. Got it. Well, good news is, Sean, that you have most and you have more than most. <laughs> so, fortunately, at least you got some money inside the bank. 
Ideally, you're gonna want at least six to 12 months, but here, I have an idea. Let's do this. Let me ask a few basic questions about employment. If everything looks good, I'll go ahead and show you what I can do. So how long have you been with your employer? Uh, three years. Okay, and just roughly, how much do you make gross? Money? 80 grand a year. 80 grand per year, got it. And then, um, and you know, and then you start like looking at the uh, the profile like, as far as age goes. Like, um, like you, the property that you're in here, uh, the property that you're in now. Do you intend to retire here, Sean? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. When do you, when abouts do you plan to retire? Fifteen years. In about fifteen. Okay. Good. So uh, looks like you and I'm looking at property profile. Mm -hmm. So it looks like the last refinance you did was bat was with Chase about two years ago. Sounds right. Okay. Do, what rate did you did you lock in? Uh, it's like a five year. It's only fixed for five years of like three and a quarter, but oh, it made okay. me nervous. I, I kind of want a 30 year fix. Yeah, especially with the way the market's moving up, the last thing you want is, is an adjustable rate. Mm. Fortunately, we have programs where you don't necessarily need to go backwards. So if it's important for you to retire in 15 years, I can show you how not to go back to a 30 year term and still hopefully create some savings for you. So here, um, if you could rate the, the condition of your property on a scale of one through 10, what would you rate it? Um, I don't know, eight. Okay. What do you think you could do to the home to make it a 10? Uh, I don't know. Probably repaint, do some outside molding to it to give it kind of a craftsman look. I was thinking about doing that. So. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so just some minor stuff and you got a perfect 10. Yeah. Cosmetics. Sure. Okay, cool. I was, so, I was wondering if it's going to be like a kitchen, a master bathroom, new roof, anything like that. So fortunately it's just cosmetic stuff. And so it sounds like a couple grand and then you got a perfect 10. You intend to live here through your retirement, correct? I do. Got it. All right, so um, in terms of the, the total cash flow, I know you're only, you know, you're only really netting uh, about a couple hundred dollars a month. Pretty much what comes in goes back out. Does that sound about right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and the $50,000 in credit card debts, how long have you been managing that balance? Oh, geez, I don't know, uh, five years. Okay, would you say it's been growing or remaining the same? Or oh, it's you know, I paid some of them down at times, but then I just use them back up again, so. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and proceed forward with our call, Sean. I have a couple ideas, but the way we operate, again, I can only put in front of you what you actually qualify for. So I'm gonna go ahead and request a copy of your credit report, and then I'm gonna put some numbers together and email it to your Gmail account. When I do request that copy, uh, Sean, what is your date of birth? December 29th. Okay, and your social? That. Got it, okay. So, um, all right, so right now is about 2.30. Uh, you're on your lunch break? Now I am, yeah. Okay, when are you in commute home? Oh, uh, eight o'clock. Okay, cool, I'll have information out for you by that time, so by the time you get home, the details should be inside your inbox. Um, when is your next break by chance, just in case I come across any hiccups in sending out the disclosures? Uh, hard to say, um, you know, in and out of a couple of meetings a day. Okay. Uh, if yeah, you have my cell there, right? I do. I'm actually sending you a consent right now if I can. Can, uh, can you please consent so I can communicate with you by text? If I have any questions that hold me back from sending out the details, I'll just shoot you over a quick text. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, cool. And then if I send you a quick text and give you a heads up, like maybe we could schedule a 10 to 15 minute phone call in case I have any questions at work? That's fine. Got it. Okay. I'll go ahead and get to work right now. And then um, if no issues or you know if there's nothing holding me back with sending you the disclosures, it'll be waiting in your inbox by the time you get home. If anything is holding me up, I'll be sure to shoot you over a text and maybe you can step outside. We'll, we'll share a few minutes. Okay. Got cool. it. All right. Bye. So that's the first conversation. Very I love fast, all of that. Very fast. I love it. Fast. Right. <laughs> right. So, Do you have it on a video? Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So, so it's very fast, very effective. You're going straight for the guts, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Never in there did I say... Um, what's your title? What you know? Who uh, who do you work for? I loved it all. No, yeah. I didn't. I don't go through yeah. the Honda. Yeah. Right, because it it's not necessary. Like w that will all wait until later. But within five minutes, I knew exactly where I could hit you. Mm -hmm. I knew that you're living check to check. I knew that you were the sole uh, decision maker. I knew that you know you be in commute, but I also planted seeds that we all go to the same place. Mm -hmm. So more than likely, when I hang up the phone, you get calls from these other places. As a busy man, you'd be like, you know what? I'm already getting a quote from the same person. Yeah. I might as well go with him because I don't need to pay Uber to get to him. I'm already with him. Yeah. I don't. I'm not going to pay broker points, etc. Right. And so and so now now, 
Notice that I didn't scrub the credit report. I didn't. I, mm -hmm. I made him feel like it was a very fast, efficient process, right? Mm -hmm. Because I'm very empathetic with how consumers like the ease without an, an, an asking very sensitive questions. So I didn't go in about like, I didn't try to make small talk. Mm -hmm. I made him seem like, like the only thing I can do for you is help you, right? I'm gonna be very quick and it was, a, it was very conversational rather than in order. Does that make sense? Um, Mine would have been in order. Right. I think when I was done talking, that's the first thing I critiqued myself on is, wow. Right. Yeah. But now, um, because I left the conversation that way, mm -hmm. you're, you're not going to go ghost on me if I texted you or if I, if I left a message and say, hey, I got a quick question. I'm about to send out your disclosures. I found something. Give me a call back. I want to run it by you real quick. Okay. Right? You're more than likely to give me a call back because I already told you and I set up the expectation that if I have any hiccups in sending you the disclosures, to uh, you know that I'll keep, get in contact with you. So you're actually inviting my phone call. It's okay. I've, mm -hmm. I've, I've taken the proactive steps to break down that barrier as opposed to scrubbing, going over options. Now, if I call him and he didn't like the options that I covered with him, he's going to screen my calls. Make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So, so now when when it comes a couple hours and I'm making him, you know, I'm I'm very sensitive to okay. If, if I knew he was on break at two o'clock, more than likely he might go on another break in about three hours, right? He'd be open to it as opposed to going on another break in forty five minutes. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking about that, and so I'll maybe coordinate a time where I'm not working up the deal right then and there because I want the info to be fresh right before my call. So I'm choosing about 30 minutes before I get in contact with him because I want it to be fresh. I don't want to hang up the phone with, with, with Sean at two o'clock, work up a deal, and then put it aside until 4.30, right? right? Because it's lost its juice, its momentum. So if, I'm, if I can, and, and a lot of times I'm not even really putting in the information. I'm mm -hmm. just kind of, I'm, I'm, how I used to take my applications was I would open up a blank email and I would just type in the body. I'd erase my signature, type in the body, maybe the, sign maybe the subject line is their name. So I know that that's that because it won't let me close that email unless it asks me to save or, or erase, right? right? Not only that, but I can control all or alt A, control all or copy all of it and paste it into the subject notes or the, the notes if, if needed. But within that email, it's, it, it looks like code. It's Morse code. So it's just saying 50K debt, 1200 minimum payment. Right, um, four years employed, eighty k per year, uh, rating at eight. He needs two grand to make it a perfect ten. So I'm already building the leverage for how to sell it. That's kind of the upside. This is the icing on the cake. Hey, Sean, you remember you uh, you said you had some cosmetic work. Fortunately, I'm gonna get you an escrow refund. It's gonna be about three grand. There goes all your cosmetic work. Now you got yourself a perfect ten. That's just the icing. So they're like, oh fuck yeah, let's do it. How do we do it? But now the question is, okay, well, how do we open up? So I want to go over that with you because you now got an understanding of how the first call goes, right? Sure. So, so tell me how the second call goes now. I know it's a little bit new to you because you're usually doing it all on the first, but let's say you didn't scrub the credit report with me on the first mm -hmm. and, and we set up a call for, how do you set up the appointment by the way? Do you just say well, when are you going to be home? I, I, I kind of put it in there, I, yeah, just to be a little bit uh, giving it, you know, 50-50 in the, in the conversation or communication aspect sure. of it, I, I give them a little leeway, to, you know, to say, well, I need you tonight, so if you're going home to change and then you're going back out again, can we talk when you're on your way back out again? You know, okay. I do try to pin them down, but okay. long story short, um, I, I, I kind of, I only take control if they do the I don't know. If they give me a time, there's my answer. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, I would only recommend you make the time. Yeah. So you control it. Okay. You're going to control it based on their availability. You find out their availability and then you kind of corner them in. So you actually make the time. So I kind of do that. Right. But, okay. But I like to, I, yeah. I like so let's say that you were married and there's another homemaker, right? Mm -hmm. I, I would have known based on number one, the question of saying, how much do you send? And then they would have said, uh, we send. That, that there's a married couple in there, right? Another way is, are you the sole income in the house? No, me and my wife works, got it. I'm, I'm gonna include the wife. Or uh, what's your marital status? I'm married, got it. So you're the one that handles your finances? Yeah, I do, remember you said that. So that's one reason why I asked that question is because, well, my wife and I usually do it, got it. So, so now I, I'm keeping that in mind. So when I set up the appointment, 
I'm telling them and say, hey, um, go ahead and give me consent for the text so I can communicate with you by text. I don't have to right. call you. Right. But more importantly, before I release the disclosures so you don't have to wait for it to come in the mail, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need your consent to send it by email. So it's all digital. Mm -hmm. It's going to be online. And it's a, safe, it's a safe online portal so you don't have to worry about your information being you know, shared with anyone. Um, but it's our own secure portal. And, uh, and I'm going to need consent from the missus as well. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, I'll send over an email. All you got to do is just give a quick consent. But um, what time do you think she'll be available to give her consent, right? So I'm kind of dropping those seeds. Uh -huh. So if he says, oh, she probably won't give, she's, she, she's a homemaker. She can give consent whenever. Okay, got it. So then I know that all I need to do is capture your attention and I can conference call on the wife because she's not at work. Right. On the flip side, if it says, oh, my wife usually gets out at five, okay, then I'm going to work around to where I can fit both of you in a conference call. They don't need to be at home, right? So, so, so let's say, because 90% of the time, they're not at home together, mm -hmm. uh, right? Because they're, they're either one's coming home or one's, they're, they're both en route. And that's actually the best time you can get them because they're right. stuck in traffic and yeah. you have nothing but their attention, right? So um, when, you, when you set up the, the next call, I would recommend forcing the appointment based on their availability when you're not going to have as much distraction, Never, never pitch a deal when they're on a 10 minute, 15 minute break um, where there's other parties involved because right. they're going to be rushed, yeah. right? Uh, they're going to give you the excuse like, hey, well, let me and my wife talk about it. Where in your case, I can do a 15 minute rush because you have a lot of, I have a lot of leverage against you already because I know you need it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and on top of that, where if, if, let's say, I did need to get another party in, it's gonna be under the premise of, I just need their consent. I'm not gonna pitch them. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So also, when I when I give a call, and the reason why it sounds like, hey, I got an idea, I wanna run it by you, is because that's how the pitch opens up. So, and yeah. whereas most loan officers are trained to say, um, you know, hey, Sean, this is Daniel. Okay, I worked on the numbers for you. I got a couple options, grab a pen and paper. That's how majority pitches start, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and, and, and most pitches start, okay, well, I got option number one, you got a 30 year fix, 5.25 payment is 1600 bucks and there's no closing costs involved, right? So to, to that effect, to some degree. Yeah. And I would say that the only problem with that is, is that number one is you're telling them it's an option. So if they don't like the option, then they're going to, they're going to blank out everything you say and want to know what the next option is, right? More importantly, you, you frame the message in a way where if they don't like what you say at the beginning, so option number one, 5.5, .5, I heard nothing more yeah. past that, right? Yeah. So so in comparison to an actual efficient pitch, you, yeah, I, would bro I, I would open up the conversation like, like, hey, Sean, this is Daniel. I was putting together the disclosures. I'm about to send it out to your Gmail account right now, and I found something. I, I want to run it by you, kind of get your feedback real quick before I send it out. Got a minute? Mm, yeah. Okay, cool. So I was going through the credit report and I noticed one of the common comments on f from the credit bureaus. Credit bureaus are obviously the one who gives you a credit score. They, they basically base your credit score on how well you manage your debt. Well, anyway, there's three of them and they all have this common comment of, of credit card balances to uh, max credit limit ratios too high. This is on all three of them. A lot of them also said that the that, uh, amount of debt load is, is, is excessive. And so I, I, I went into further research or, or into further review the credit report and then I found the accounts that they're talking about. You know what, Sean, you have a Chase card. Um, I think this is part of the 50 grand you told me about. Yeah. It has a balance of 28 grand and the high credit limit is 30. Right. You see, Sean, what I've learned is that the only way to remove this is to get that balance down to 30% or below. Mm -hmm. Because you've had this much credit card debt, your credit score is already under 680. So I have an idea and I want to run it by you because I, I, want, I think that you can position yourself to retire in the 15 years with no house payment. Now, I'm, now I got his interest, right? Sure. So um, you'd mentioned you pay about $1,200 towards these accounts and they're just minimum payments. Fortunately, this particular option, like or this particular alternative of putting, of putting your payment, basically what I did was I added your mortgage payment of two grand and then I took in consideration the payment that you're sending to Chase you know, Visa, Amex, or whatever, and it came out to about thirty-two hundred. That's basically his mortgage plus his credit cards, right? And and what I did was I looked at it and I said, okay, how can I help you maximize the return 
on this transaction and also get away with not only an improved FICO, but with enough monthly savings to where you're not living check to check. With enough monthly savings to where you could build up six to 12 months of living so you don't have to rely on credit cards anymore. And so this is what I came up with. I want to rent it by you. So basically your payment from $3,200, I can take it down to, uh, I can take it down to 2,200. So it's about a thousand dollars spread. Now you're also going to get a surge of cash flow from the transaction, meaning you're going to defer payment and get an escrow refund. I did the math on that and came out to about four grand. The upside is you had mentioned that your house was an eight, but after cosmetic work, it would be a 10. I think you said, so yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. So there's four grand to do your cosmetic work. Now, here's what I like about it is that it would free up a thousand dollars per month, giving you more than just a couple hundred dollars left, or in cases, some cases where you're check to check, and put you a little bit more in position to increase your 401k contribution because your employer, do they match your 401k? No. Okay, good. So, well, not good, but what I'm saying is now you have at least enough leverage to open up more investment opportunities mm -hmm. so that you can be in position to retire comfortably in 15 years. Whatever you decide to do with that extra $1,000, Sean, is completely up to you. That's at your discretion. But where I'm getting at is now you have the flexibility of doing so. So based on my experience is that after about 6 to 12 months, your FICO score should just skyrocket from here because you're not going to have any other debt. And since you're becoming part of our portfolio, as I mentioned, we're a direct servicer for Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. So our relationship with them is very strong. And our technology allows us to monitor your, your property value based on zip code. So once the market improves or once the, uh, the, the value improves, we actually notify you as courtesy. Now, here's a neat little thing is that after your sixth payment, we have these courtesy check-ins with you. So if the market allows you to improve your existing term, we do that courtesy, meaning that there's no lender fees involved. So it's one of the little neat perks that our clients actually enjoy from being part of the new American fam funding family. So I'll talk to you about that if necessary. But first off, let me ask you, how does that sound? What, what do you think about that? It sounds like you're saying that you're going to save me $1,000 a month right now. Correct. Wow. I yeah. didn't think that could happen. Yeah, yeah. So here's the thing is that um, technically I can't. Um, as a matter of fact, I can only disclose it. And because the market rate's been, it's been really crazy lately. I mean, the market's already shifted twice since yesterday, mm -hmm. right? And so like if the market rate is moving up an eighth a point. So just this week, it's already shifted and worse in four times, which technically it did, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it's been continuously getting worse. And say, but I have an idea. I'm going to ask my manager because the benefit here is so high that I'm going to ask for a 24-hour reservation. And what this means, Sean, is that I have to validate that you have the ability to proceed, I'm meaning I can't, I can't offer a lock. A lot of these other companies that are probably going to try and call you, they're going to try to lock you. I, to, in my opinion, I don't know how they can because they don't know that you're qualified, right? So before you waste your money on an appraisal, before you... Um, waste your money in gathering you know, years and years worth of documents for these other guys, use my relationship with the same entities where I only need minimal documentation. So basically a pay stub. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I, I'll have my assistant email you a quick checklist. Once I get those items, it'll take me less than 20 minutes to confirm that you can proceed. And then, and then from there, you can actually have the decision to lock your loan. And that's when I can protect you from this, from this open market. So what I do is basically dot my I's, cross my T's before you even attempt to take a step forward. I want to make sure that there's a bridge to cross for you safely to get on the other side. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So um, I'm going to go ahead and request a 24-hour reservation, the pay stub, and a mortgage statement, and your insurance agent's name or the homeowner's insurance. Do you know where that statement is? I can probably find it. Okay, cool. If you can't find it, if it's more than likely it's probably the same insurance agent as your car, mm. right? Probably. Okay, so just, just get the insurance uh, statement from your car, and then I'll, I'll put two and two together, and my assistant will probably contact your insurance agent. We'll, we'll make it super simple for you. But um, what time tomorrow do you think you can have that pay stub, mortgage statement, and uh, HOI? Uh, if I grab it together tonight, I could probably get it to you around lunchtime tomorrow. Okay, sounds good. All right, so that makes it within 24 hours. I'll go ahead and prepare your file right now and have my manager approve the, uh, the reservation. If he does approve it, I'll go ahead and, and disclose everything in writing so that you have it in black and white. Okay, yeah, that sounds fine. Okay, perfect, great. Cool. Now, now I can lock because I have him committed. Does that make sense? Okay, then how particular are they about the lock script? Like, 
or did you not even really lock it? Did you just tell them you'd reserve the rate? Oh yeah, so I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, part of the actual pitch is is within that is the lock script. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I could probably breeze through it. So I'm actually in that pitch. I I, I don't go and say, okay, I'm going to record a lock script right and, now. But before you go on, all I was going to say yeah. is that now, see, you've got me at the point where I'm going to actually, I want to get into action. Right. And I'm just giving you feedback on what it is that I'm hearing. You might already know this stuff. But I'm I'm telling you, it's gotta, that's gotta slay. That's beautiful. Words. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean. It for just sure. compliments. That's all I meant. Yeah, yeah it, it's it's automated, so it's just you just right. the conveyor belt. Yeah, it's just right down the line. And I can say everything. Well, I just need the words. Yeah, I love every yeah. part of that. Yeah, I mean, I got a ton of videos, you know. So I'm so that's that's it. it fortunately, I've documented a lot of these sessions. I documented a lot of the trainings I did for. The other individuals did not. Not too many people took advantage of it, but people who took advantage of it are really winning right now. Send it to me. Yeah, it's gonna be on the. It's gonna be on the channel. Okay. Yeah. So um, so yeah. So when I get the peak, the emotional state, right? Like, cause because right at the point where I said, "What do you think about that?" Your emotional state should be at its highest. And you'd be like, "Oh yeah, sounds like a great idea." The reason why it works is because they didn't take it with with salt, right? There was no resistance. I didn't say I have a couple options, option number one, blah, blah, blah. All of it was an idea. And they're more inclined to give you their attention if they don't think it's dangerous, right? Mm -hmm. It's putting them at harm or they have, they, they're have they being pitched. And then more importantly, where you could have, let's say you could have went completely left field, right? And uh, say, you know what, Daniel, I, I don't know. Or they say, okay, you know what, I thought that, so this is what I'll do. I'll go ahead and disclose and you kind of drive the conversation where it's not necessarily a turn down, you just want to kind of put feelers out there. But because I knew exactly where you were, I knew you were going to take it. I knew you got it. Because I, I went over the, the framing first, which um, if you signed up for my sales script, mm -hmm. so you should have an email where I actually show you how the pitch sounds on the phone, um, where I recorded an actual live pitch. And, and, and you'll kind of, kind of hear it in action so you see it. But, um, but when, you, when you ask them the question, like, what are your thoughts about it? Their emotional state should be at its high. Yeah. So they want to do it, right? right. Then, I, then, I can, then I transition over to the sales, uh, the recorded lock script, but I don't do it like some people, like, hey, we're going to record a lock script right now. I don't give them no warning. I just hit the record and say, okay, I'm going to go and release disclosures that are going to show you the following. The loan balance is 430000 It's going to be based on a 30-year fixed. It's at 4.99%. The closing cost total is thirty three hundred. Of that, the lender fee is sixteen twenty nine. It's going to be based on blah blah blah, and that's when I'm recording the lock script, sure. right? So once it's done, then I unrecord and say, "Do you have any questions?" Yeah. So now that's already taken care of, and then I transition. Nope, everything sounds great. I'll have the documents to you by tomorrow morning. Perfect. I'll go ahead and put your reservation in line now, All right? And then when the market gets worse, sometimes I'll shoot out an email to the team and say, "Any reservations in line?" Um, you know, you've probably seen that. Like any reservations in line, I need you to pull it from the line right now. And what that does is it gives you collateral to then forward it over to your prospect and say, hey, I just got this email. I'm going to have to pull your reservation. Now it makes sense. I didn't know that little Yeah, so, so, but I'm, you know, because the agents understand it. Yeah. So, so then they'll use that to kind of light the fire and say, hey, I need your documents. My, my manager is asking me to pull your reservation. I'm going to fight for you. Now it's like a team effort and I'm the bad cop. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah, so you're just building the story. And uh, yeah, if you can get that down and you can get that momentum down, then it'll be fast. Where you, you, where you don't, I think a lot of the time is being wasted is just is trying to build up rapport when they don't really care about that anymore these days, right? Yeah. Yeah, they, they just want, kind of want to know what's in it for them. And so fine, let's play to that. Let's play to that, that beat. Let me show you everything I know. Jump.